All right, mixing colors can be very difficult, but in this video, I'm gonna give you some key tips that will make it much, much easier. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil paint so you can get better faster. All right, color mixing. Not much I can just talk about, so I'm just gonna go straight to the video and explain how I mix colors. All right, so first off, I'm gonna just give a brief overview of the color wheel because if you don't understand that, uh, you're not gonna be able to get very far. I'm um, keeping this very simple. Um, I'm, only, I'm only gonna be using um, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and lemon yellow, and titanium white. Got some other colors here, just don't pay attention to those. Those are just left over on my palette here. Um, so first off, it's gonna do the old color wheel here. So you got blue on one side. You got red. It's gonna create a little triangle here. And I highly recommend using um, just these three colors in white because, especially when you're starting out, because it will force you to have a better understanding of color, uh, a good foundation. If you really understand these um, basic colors, also it'll save you money. You won't have to buy a bunch of colors. And from my experience, it, it, it helps you a lot build a good instinct for color. If you're constantly just reaching for colors out of the tube, uh, it's, you're just not gonna really strengthen that color mixing muscle and it will get to a point where it will just be completely instinctual. You really won't be thinking about what colors you're mixing together. You just know which colors to go to. All right, so I got these. And so when you mix colors that are opposite each other, you're gonna get intermediary colors. So you got, whoops. So I got my blue here. So I'm gonna do blue and some yellow. That's gonna get you a green. And then say if I mix blue and red, it's gonna get you a purple. And this is gonna be good for really dark. Like you notice, I don't ever use black. Um, if you ever have stuff that's really, really dark, like almost black, like the really, really darks of trees, anything that's really dark, uh, I I always start out by mixing this deep, uh, deep purple like this. And that's good for darks. Uh, if you want actually a lighter purple, if you're doing mounds or something, a lot of times with purple you have to lighten it up. With white, you see the purples a lot more visible now with the white. And then lastly, going to do uh, red and yellow to get an orange. Now I got an orange. And you know, you can keep mixing colors. You can mix, you know, these, uh, get like a lime green here. And you know, there's, you know, it keeps going and going. But to understand these basics will really help you out a lot with knowing what to do. And the thing with uh, the color wheel, the biggest thing it helps you with, I find, is complementary colors, which are colors that are opposite. So you got like red and green are opposite. So if you had some green, like say if you had some trees and you mixed up this green, like this green right here is way too vibrant. It's not a natural green. You're not going to see this green in trees or anything like that. Um, it needs to be neutralized. So you would add some red to neutralize it. So I'll show you real quick over here. So you just got this basic almost out of the tube green and you want to make it look more natural you're going to add a touch of red now you're getting more of a natural almost like a green of leaves grass stuff like that you can see next to that it's just more natural green because we neutralized it with its complement which is red same thing uh, goes for all the other colors. Um, if you have blue, complement is uh, orange over here. So say if you had blue right here, and you're like, wow, that's way too much. Take a little bit of orange, which is a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Now that blue is not so vibrant, it's more of a natural blue. 
Now this goes really well with skin tones because with skin tones, I kind of always, you know, I think of skin tones as, you know, it's kind of a peachy, orangey, fleshy tone. So I always kind of start with an orange and I work my way from there. Add a little bit of white. And you'd think that would be a good skin tone right there. It looks nice and flesh tony next to that, but it's way too vibrant. You you would need to knock that down with a little bit of blue. So I think a little bit of blue here. There we go. Now it's looking a little more natural. It's not so vibrant. Go back and touch a red. Now you're working with a good skin tone right there. So just knowing these basics uh, just helps so much. It, it allows you to mix any color from these basic colors and gives you a really good solid understanding of how color works. So if you get this down and it becomes second nature, you're really gonna just fly through color mixing and not even think about it, which I think is the best way to go. Easy way to remember when you're painting uh, what the complement colors are. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times you've seen these colors put together uh, in uh, real life like a lot of times like any sports teams will use complement colors like the Minnesota Vikings purple and yellow uh, Lakers purple and yellow there's a reason they do that it looks aesthetically pleasing when you put them together uh, yeah the Christmas colors red and green you got blue and orange it's like Syracuse Florida Gators you see blue and orange put together a lot those are just things to uh, help you remember what the compliments are. So that way when you're when you're painting and you're, you, you'll you think in terms of like this needs more yellow or this needs to be more blue, this needs to be more red. Uh, I find that's a lot easier and simpler to think about uh, instead of this need to be warmer or cooler, um, darker, lighter, like those can be kind of vague and not really that helpful when you're thinking about it. But just thinking, oh, this needs to be more blue, this needs to be more red, this needs to be more yellow and be able to push your colors in those directions. All right, next I'm gonna talk about just mixing colors like physically on your palette. Uh, it's like the physical process of setting up your palette and mixing your colors and having your colors somewhat organized uh, on your palette. And first off, the way I, like I lay out my colors, I didn't really ever think about it for the longest time, but uh, about where I put my colors, I just kind of put them anywhere, but this really helps a lot and keeps you organized. Um, and I just kind of go from uh, cool colors to warm colors. I got my uh, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, uh, lemon yellow, and uh, titanium white. Uh, I'll put colors in between or sometimes like I got uh, cerulean blue. I'll put some uh, sap green, some crimson, yellow ochre. This just kind of, as I'm mixing colors, it keeps them in the uh, kind of like the right order, like value wise, color temperature wise. Uh, even though a lot of times when I work, I end up, my palette ends up being uh, very mixed. There's no real order and some artists really don't like that. They, they get lost in it and it, it, they, it, it hurts them in terms of knowing where they're at. Uh, it, for me, I haven't really found it that much and I feel like it helps me add a lot of harmony in my colors in the painting because I kind of mix all my colors from a previous color that I mixed. So every color has a little bit of another color in it that's already in the painting, which I don't know, for me, I find that helpful to harmonize the colors in my painting. But I'm just gonna kind of show you how I would mix colors on a painting. I'll just kind of start with a, a flesh tone here, like say if you're doing a portrait. I'm just only gonna use the primaries here. So I'm just gonna take these and let's say I'm gonna start I always work dark to light too so let's just say the darks of the face actually be kind of more of a purple here so 
I think the really, really dark shadows in the face. So we got this purple, I'm gonna neutralize it just a bit with the yellow. And this is gonna be like the darkest darks in the shadows. The really darks go right there. And then I'm just gonna kind of branch this out. And a lot of times I'll take the color that I'm using and just kind of start a new pile here and say I want this to be a little lighter of a flesh tone. Because if one, I can see it next to my dark so I can see its comparison right here on the palette, which is very helpful. I got like a little bit of a lighter color. And I'll just keep branching this off into whatever colors I need. I know I don't have a reference right now for like skin tones I'm looking at. I'm just kind of guessing here, but it's got like a little bit of lighter skin tone here. Maybe we got the highlight. Highlights in the face. Sometimes you'll have certain areas that are like in between, so I'll kind of take some of this, a little bit of that, and you know, just keep branching out from there. Another thing is make sure to, don't worry about wasting paint. Um, I know it sucks and you, you pay money for this paint and you don't want to waste it. That's just really, that's just part of the process. Um, I was told that very, very early on, don't worry about wasting paint. Um, so make sure like when you're mixing up your colors, mix up a good amount. Like if you don't mix up enough and you run out, it's fine. Don't worry about like matching the color, like, you know, like oh, I'm not gonna be able to match the color exactly. Like you will, you'll be fine. Like you'll be able to, you know, mix up more of the color and be able to match it again. But you know, just to save yourself some trouble, uh, don't be afraid to really, uh, one, put out enough paint uh, on your palette here because you don't want to be constantly putting out more paint and also you'll just kind of subconsciously use less paint if you don't put that much paint out there and your paint will suffer from that. Just going to do another example here. Say if I had some trees. Let's start with the darkest darks of the trees. So a lot of time is like almost black or really dark purple here. I'm going to neutralize that purple just a little bit. And from there Gonna add a little more yellow. Just be kind of like, so this could be a little darker. Just gonna kind of keep branching this out. Some people like to pre mix their colors, they'll look at the colors in the image that they're painting and they'll actually mix out all their colors on their palette beforehand. Um, some people like doing that. I, I don't, I've tried it. I don't, it just doesn't really work for me that well. Um, I might do it in the future uh, as I progress and maybe I'll find it very helpful in the future. But uh, as of right now, I kind of just do it as I go like I get in a better flow that way than kind of pre-mixing everything and pre-judging and thinking what will be opposed to just kind of just being the process but you know if you kind of if you get too you know flustered while you're painting that you know a lot of times a lot of people do that pre-mixing color when they do plain air paint because uh time is an issue and a lot of times when you're plain air painting that time can kind of mess with you and uh, you move faster than you need to and you don't really pay attention to the colors that you're mixing that well. But you can do whatever you feel works best for you. All right, sometimes trees, they got like a little more red in certain areas, the leaves. So maybe I branch off 
here. Something like that. But you see, I kind of, I keep them all clustered in kind of what I'm painting. So there you go. Also, another thing is when you get a palette, get a big, you know, as big as you can manage, uh, have a good amount of mixing space. It's just going to help you a lot. Because uh, if you're constantly cleaning your palette, you're losing colors that are in your painting. Um, you know, it's how, like if I'm painting another part of the face, like I can use this color to darken another color. And just having that color in a different, you know, in a color that's in another part of the painting will really help bring all the colors together because they're all coming from like the same batch in a way. Uh, so get like a good size palette. Like I got this turtle wood palette. It's really big right now. It, this is really expensive. It's, you know, over a hundred dollars, but there's really cheap big palettes you can get. The, my best advice is to get a glass palette, which you can just get a big piece of glass, like buy, go to Goodwill, buy a picture frame that has a, you know, the glass over top of it for $8 and just take out the glass. Um, I've used like a cabinet to, um, kind of like a, uh, like a dresser type drawer thing that had like a, a glass cabinet. I just took that off. I used that for a long time. You can go to a glass store and cut you a piece of glass really cheap. Uh, you clean it off with a razor. It's really, you know, just the best mixing surface. It's really cheap. And just make sure you get a really good size palette so you have room uh, to kind of mess around and really uh, play around with the colors and mix enough paint. All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, see what I'm painting on a daily basis at Forza43. If there's any other topics on oil painting that you want to see a video on, things that you struggle with, things that nobody else is making videos on, things you understand, please let me know in the comment section and I will make a video on it. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.